الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وآله وأزواجه وذريته أجمعين اللهم ربنا أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم أرنا حقا أيك الأشياء كما هي اللهم ربنا زدنا علما وعملا وإخلاصا يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر أولياءك في غزة في سائر بلد المسلمين اللهم أهزم آداءك في غزة وفي سائر بلدان المسلمين آمين صلى الله تعالى على رسول خير خلقي محمد وآله وصحبه وزواجه وزريته أجمعين برحمتك يا رحم الرحمين آمين We covered this part before but it's still worth it to have another look before we move on So yet the state remains the favorite sorry the favored template of the Islamists and the ulama in a recent and highly representative statement. Representative of what? The powerful Muslim brothers argue that the modern nation state, the modern nation state, so there's the modern and then there's the nation states. So are there non modern <laughs> nation states uh, which have existed? Um, argue that the modern nation state does not uh, stand in contradiction with the implementation of the Islamic Sharia because Islam is the highest authority in Muslim land or it should be. Now, I want to get back to this conception of contradiction which I didn't focus that much up, like the sense of contradiction. Obviously, we talked about contradiction, but not the sense of contradiction here. Obviously, contradiction here can't mean strict logical contradiction. Uttanaqud in Arabic. <clears throat> but when he says that uh, modern, uh, when they say, if they say, I mean, <laughs> uh, modern nation state. does not stand in contradiction with the implementation of Islamic Sharia. So we can accept that um, You can, in principle, construct an Islamic state, uh, Islamic na nation state. So, Morsi's Egypt, for example. or Erdogan's uh, Turkey can become uh, nation states. They are nation states, obviously, and they can implement Sharia fully. I guess you can't do fully, but at least partially. So there's no contradiction in this sense there's no contradiction so in democratic election uh, you know good people can be elected you know hamas was elected in palestine election morsi was elected in egypt Erdogan is elected in turkey And it's possible in practice that we implement the law of God in that sort of state. So in this um, 
very basic sense there is no contradiction so where is the contradiction where is the contradiction so where is that contradiction so let's see and <clears throat> Obviously, we are not talking about uh, uh, contradiction in a strict logical sense, but contradiction in the sense that the spirit of the modern nation state and structure sort of goes against the spirit and structure of the Islamic law and etc. So, one, one uh, principled way in which a contradiction can emerge and does emerge is that nation state has boundaries there is inside and there is outside and this nation state drives uh, draws its legitimacy from inside from inside from inside so it draws its legitimacy from inside and owes its basic uh, I'll say loyalty and duty to inside uh, and duty is a better one to inside so who is the outside and i'm not talking about here principle whoever is outside is in principle in principle uh, in principle, the nation state doesn't drive its legitimacy from outside. And in principle, it doesn't owe any basic duty to outside. And this obviously contradicts the Islamic principle of, for example, the Zimma, Zimma, I don't know how to translate Zimma, but. Uh, basic uh, political and non-political loyalty let's say of Muslims is one so if Zimma of all the Muslim in the world is one so how can this nation state in principle I'm not talking about practical term, can discriminate between A Bengali, for example, trying to cross border from India to Pakistan, and a Bengali, which is already living inside Pakistan and hold a Pakistani passport. And obviously, na nation state makes a principle, fundamental distinction between these both. Pakistani state is beholden to this Bengali which is inside and owes duty to him or her duty of protection protection and his rights on him draws uh, uh, its partial legitimacy from there uh, but it doesn't owe any legit any Islamically uh, ordained Legit, uh, legitimacy and duty to this Bengali person and if it does owe uh, any legitimacy or duty to this person according to humanitarian law etc that's uh, different from the notion of Zimma, Zimma is small so I'm not talking about practical term but in principle uh, any Muslim nation state or Turkish state for example if, if it were to become a fully Muslim Islamic nation state. 
it will still still discriminate between its own citizens and a Kurdish Muslim living living outside its uh, territory in northern Iraq, for example. So that's 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 one fundamental contradiction at the principle level, and uh, you can think of other contradiction as well. One. Uh, uh, I'll mention other, another major contradiction. So, nation state is embedded in a world system. And United Nations and international bodies Basically, it's sanction in a way imperialism and through imperialism, capitalism. So, even if you are a Muslim nation state and you are implementing Sharia, you have to implement Sharia within international law and its boundaries that is within the framework of imperialism and capitalism. And to the extent that you will try to um, uh, break through this, you will no longer be a nation state in a strict sense. And you can't do that without overcoming your status as a nation state and establishing yourself as a potential universalist state which is bounded by boundaries only in a contingent terms and not in any essential terms assumed by a modern nation or a modern uh, a modern nation state and third and final thing i would like to mention is that even if you fully implement sharia as a nation state you can't struggle for and implement Islamic civilization because Sharia is just part of Islamic civilization and dominance of Islamic civilization means that you need to to overcome capitalism the state try to establish Islamic way of life and overcome capitalism but overcoming capitalism obviously requires overcoming nation state as well so uh, we have discussed that uh, other places and maybe we'll come back to that but these are sort of um, contradictions which come to mind so contradiction is not that you can't implement Sharia nation state at least you can uh, implement Sharia uh, and it can be you know almost Full implement it can also be almost full implementation of Sharia, and you can have a state machinery run by very practicing and well meaning Muslims. But the contradiction is that you can't transcend. Sharia to the implementation of Islamic way of life, Islam as a civilization, etc. So that's the contradiction. Okay, let's go back to the text. So, um, then it's um, 
argue that the nation, modern nation state does not stand contradiction, note that developed uh, does not prove through being developed. We can benefit from its achieving. It contains no contradiction to the founding and with its mechanisms, that is, the highest authority Muslim should be with the mechanism, regulation, laws, and system, the modern state. So, no, I don't know whether. So, if they are saying modern states, so, or they are saying nation states, so they are two different things because they are modern states which are not nation states, at least conceptually. So, what is it? Modern state it contains no contradiction to the founding does not preclude the possibility of being developed so that we can form in achieving. Uh, no develop should be taken adapted to our needs and purpose. So adaption mean reform. So if if that's what they are saying. So so if that's what they are saying nation state or modern state can be adapted, that is, can be reformed. So that's a reform strategy. But there's another strategy which, and we obviously reject reform strategy for the reason we've already laid out, uh, but revolutionary strategy doesn't try to adapt, adapt this state to Islam. It tried to deconstruct this state. <laughs> As a postmodernist, um, Allah might enjoy this uh, and deconstruct uh, nation state, not reform it, transcend it, and form a new state, which can take. Um, De uh, after deconstruction, uh, individual parts from modern state, but not its uh, structure or part as a whole, and build a new state, which will be a modern state in that sense only. <laughs> That's the new state. It is, it is fit for the circumstances. So it's a ishtihad in that sense. Um, but that state would be Islamic state. And that Islamic state is not an ideal state. We are building that Islamic state hopefully now, today, within these existing um, nation states so that one day they can be, they can implode and be overwhelmed by that state. As it happened partially in Iran and Afghanistan. Okay. Any attempt by the nation state to quarantine religion or undermine commitment to the supreme authority of Islam will no doubt be rejected by any Muslim. Thus, the state is expected to promote Islamic values. Which state there? Only Islamic state can do that, including general public and the rule of freedom and equal citizen and deepen this conception of citizenship. Uh, obviously, Islamic state will abolish the concept of citizenship. So, in that sense, this is a reformation. And we talked about that. A subtitle to document is there is no contradiction between nation state and Islamic Sharia. And we are look at, uh, we have already looked at in what sense there is a contradiction and in what sense there is no contradiction. But now coming to important part. But surely, but surely there is, okay. That's here the cat comes out of the bag, so to speak. The argument of this book, like Halak's book, that we have already intimated, is that any conception of modern Islamic state is inherently self-contradictory, according to him. Any conception of modern Islamic state is self Contradictory. <laughs> okay, what about non modern Islamic State? <laughs> we will call it non modern Islamic State. Mr. Allah. Uh, 
and obviously that means that is basically Islam would be left to at the social level and at the individual level or communal level that is so that, so uh, either this is a form of anarchism or is asking us to treat modern state as a fact of life and just concentrate on implementing Islam at the social and individual level. But even if it was uh, Islamically permissible, it's impossible in the long run because modern state is a leviathan. It's an all-encompassing thing. So obviously, uh, Mr. Hallak, what he is um, <laughs> arguing for is for Muslim to abandon Islamic struggle against uh, imperialism and capitalism because you can't uh, struggle against imperialism and capitalism without uh, struggling at all three levels at the level of state at the level of community at the level of individual and forming a state which can overwhelm imperialism at one, one day a universalist state which is locally situated but it has capacity to expand and overcome imperialism one day, inshallah. Um, obviously, he knows his position is ridiculous. That's why he puts a foot, uh, long footnotes. Let us read it and then we'll continue from there. So basically, he is against the notion of Islamic State and is just uh, trying to uh present that rejection in a more uh roundabout way <laughs> through critique okay so let's look at this uh, footnote and then we'll stop there and continue from there next time okay as we shall see in the course of my your mono his monograph that our argument will unfold in various directions since it depends on the and therefore is determined by large phenomena and structures of modern project as a whole, modern project as a whole <laughs> in modernity. Skeptic, a skeptic should, so he's already defensive, a skeptic should take one note that I advocate no view whatsoever to the effect that Islamic law or Islamic governance has no place in the world. But if Islam doesn't have a state, then it means that uh, you implement whatever Islam you have, have at communal or individual level. But that community is to a large extent shaped by the state, which we are uh, hopefully are children. Only a dogmatic, <laughs> narrow and myopic vision, it's calling names, can allow for such an interpretation. Thus, must be said once and for all that the argument this book rests on the premise. What's the premise? That the creative, now these too many words, reformulation of the Sharia, creative reform. Is this some sort of a Suli uh, device or what? Creative reformulation. Mean Ishtihab and Islamic governance may be one of the most relevant and constitutive ways to reshape the modern. So, so he wants uh, he wants to reform modernity. So he wants Muslims to. So he his whole talk about modern nation state and all that. Uh, you might get the impression that he is against modernity or against nation states. No, he want to reform. He want to reform mod modernity like any postmodernist, and he want to use Islam to reform modernity. But we want to destroy modernity. We don't want to reform modernity. One that is in dire need of moral reconstruction. It doesn't have any morality. We reject mo uh, modern morality as uh, Shaitan, uh, Shaitan's uh, version of the universalization of self-worship. So there's no, and that is no morality. That's the rejection of all morality. This reconstitution and its political and legal spin-offs cannot be conceivable for Muslim without a correct diagnosis of the problem of Islamic State. Muslim have Muslims have no interest in 
reforming modernity or should not have any interest in Muslim. We don't want to reform. And you, how can you reform La ilaha illallah insan, for example? This also explaining why, why a robust proposal of such a future reconstruction must await a genuine understanding of the multi-layered contradiction in the concept of Islam. <laughs> contradiction. Contradiction from whose perspective? Maybe there are contradictions from the perspective of reformed modernism which want to use Islam for reforming. Uh, modernism. So this is Halak's pro project. Now I don't uh, um, it doesn't surprise me as a kafir he can do whatever he wants but what surprised me is what makes you know knowledgeable Muslims even those who are you know orthodox Muslim impressed by this guy. I don't understand. Anyway we'll continue inshallah.